Hello, this is Ditti Vanhala, an associate trainer for Art to Ride. And here you can see one of our in-hand sessions that was filmed earlier this month before proceeding to do a lunging session with side reins. So Pölu here is an eight-year-old fin horse gelding that we got about two and a half years ago. Uh, we have trained him according to Art to Ride Foundation training um, ever since he came to us, basically. And here you can see one of our basic in-hand work workouts that uh, we usually do. So he pretty much stretches uh, straight into the ground level from the get-go. He wasn't like this in the beginning at all, and this is due all to very hard work for the past year and a half with the in-hand exercises. Um, he was, uh, quen in fact, quite impossible for me to start with the in-hand work, and it was Will who got it going for us in the uh, 2016 May clinic over here. And here you see I took him into a small circle because he lo lost his concentration and was looking what was happening outside of the school or actually he's a little bit um, excited by the fact that the back gate is actually open there to the um, where the jumps are sitting there so he's he was a little bit puzzled like yeah that usually is closed so anyway so we proceeded doing a, a little bit of leg yield there and then i let him stretch stretch out again and he tends to really push his uh, head out as well. I take care that he doesn't lock his neck against uh, against my hand as well so so that he does not um, kind of stiffen his neck against me. And here we do a little bit of leg yield through the corner to the long side. It's not as brilliant as the other side for some reason. He does not like uh, or for some reason this long side is more difficult to work with than the other side um, i've no idea where, why it is so anyway he could be a little bit more um, active in his walk here in fact but i think i get him going at some point a little bit better so here we go again i turn him and I ask him for some leg yield and this one is a lot better so he's uh, crossing his hind legs quite nicely and stepping under nice um, maybe I have a tad too much bend on the neck so I could concentrate a little bit more to keep uh, keep his neck a little bit straighter so that it doesn't uh, jackknife there too badly but that's what that's what uh, we usually do. We do a little bit of leg yield to the long side from the short side, and then we walk on uh, just straight on with some more activity, perhaps. So here you see how this side is not working as brilliantly as other. So I would have wanted to turn a little bit uh, sooner and go on a bit more straight, and then a little bit more gradually yield it to the long side so but as i said for some weird reason this side is <laughs> always worse than the other side of the school and here he starts to have a little bit better <clears throat> better activity and he's still looking a little bit at the open gate there but he doesn't mind it too much anymore and then I'm gonna do some shoulder four now. Here we go. A little bit too much again. The, he could be a little bit straighter from his neck, so not so much inside bent. But I'm I'm kind of looking back there. You see look, me looking back and see how I wanted to see how he's stepping with his hind legs. And that was going fine. So he was stepping very nicely to the middle of his body there, but I lost a little bit um, the neck at the same time as I was looking backwards, so to say. And he could be again a little bit more forward. So that seems to be one of my problems is to just 
keep a tap on um, his uh, activity levels that he should be a bit more active here and here we go again with the shoulder four and the same thing he's uh, he slows down a little bit because this side is anyway more difficult for him because he needs to stretch his right side of his body which he finds always more difficult because his his um, muscles are a little bit shorter on his right side so this is why he he finds it a bit more difficult as well and of course it's then it's easier for him to just um, overbend his neck so he doesn't have to work so hard so here we go again a bit more shoulder four and that's actually a lot better that's actually going quite nicely there he's bending a little bit too much again I correct it in the end and now he's working now he's walking a lot better to my liking and that's where I decided to stop and change change the rain there and obviously a little bit of a piece of carrot as well before changing the rain and then we do basically the same thing over all over again on the other side so the other rain here I'm starting and I'm asking him to step around me so I'm doing a small circle to turn here and this is uh, this is pretty pretty good effort he stayed quite straight with his neck and stepped under and over so that was a that was a good example of uh, a small circle with in hand work and this side uh, the problem or the the biggest problem we have with Berlu is that he needs to keep his neck straight and we need to control his outside rein a lot better on on this side because he tends to really jackknife with his neck so you see me now every now and then i lift my hand up on the withers like there you can see how i'm i'm controlling the outside rain a lot more by lifting my hand up even over the withers and here you can see the problem we have he's escaping through his uh, shoulder he's just jackknifing and you can see how i'm i am uh, attempting to correct and here you can see i i managed to get him a bit straighter but there was a bit of a struggle the first leg yield here but so it's uh, very important to keep tap on his outside rein on on the right hand with the in hand work and obviously when your ha when your hand is that high like here you see me correcting it uh you can't really use your whip so at the same time because it becomes ineffective so you have to break this work down into okay i need to correct his neck and then i need to lower the hand like here to ask him to yield so you see me here i was at first asking him to yield and then i needed to correct him also that to go uh, straight as well so that he wouldn't just go sideways and lose his impulsion altogether so there's a lot of factors and you need to break them down sometimes um, to kind of make it work all at once so here we go again I'm turning him and wanting to do the leg yield to the side and this time it goes a lot better He's a little bit overbending, but not much to the side. So I managed to control the outside a lot better on this side, this high time. So I was very pleased on that because he, and you can see the result here. He's moving a lot better through his uh, body after that. So you don't need very much. Once you got one or two good steps of uh, yield, you will get in that instant effect of the horse really powering through his top line and getting it all activated but sometimes it can be a struggle like here you see that um, you need to break it down sometimes a bit more so here uh, you see me going with the little easier leg yield with a bit less uh, stepping over 
but I was pleased with this anyway because I was concentrating now more on the fact that he wasn't uh, trying to overbend his neck to the inside. So I managed to keep him a lot straighter, but obviously a bit less of uh, yielding there. It was a, it wasn't as uh, you know severe leg yield as as I've had before. So it wasn't as effective in the leg yield, but I managed to keep him straighter. So I accomplished something in it anyway. And here we do a shoulder four, which is ending up a little bit too much on the neck bend again but I'm also trying to so it's it's a matter of trying to correct the bend like I got him straight again there and then to ask him to step over and now he's stretching very nicely at times and I'm also controlling his um, because if sometimes when when your horse really stretches like that there, it really kinks his neck even forward. It could be good, but it also could be that the horse is locking the neck against you. So you have to kind of um, keep an eye on it that he's not he's not locking himself against your hand. So that's what I'm doing here every now and then because I know that he can also when he when he uh, overbends his neck to the inside he tends to also lock his um, uh, lock his um, kind of inside hand again <laughs> inside uh, bit against me so i need to kind of uh, release him from that uh, lock and i just do it by a little bit of a shake in the, in the um, in the inside rein i don't pull or yank or anything it's just a little bit of a little bit of a movement there to make him kind of um, become a bit more supple in his jaw so here you see a little bit nicer activity so that's that's a couple of things I have to kind of keep in mind here is the keep the activity and control his outside rein so I hope this was informative for you all and um, thanks for watching.